Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to begin our look at Nutshell by Alice in Chains from the Unplugged album. Um, so this one's slightly different. It's got uh, an acoustic guitar solos. Um, it's got the same chord progression done on acoustic throughout. Uh, but I'm going to be doing the guitar solos that happen um, on the Unplugged version on the acoustic guitar. So there's going to be two of those. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at that chord progression, which goes throughout the entire song. And then we'll take a look at the uh, Jerry Cantrell's first guitar solo. Then I'll do another video, we'll cover that outro uh, solo, which is a little bit longer. All right, so let's take a look at these chords first. Um, now, he comes in in the middle of the progression at the beginning of the song. So let's just start from the beginning of the progression, learn it in order first, and then I'll show you how the song begins. So we're going to start here with this. Uh, it's basically just a C add 9 chord. That's the third fret on the A, second fret on the D. Open G, oh, just case in point real quick, we are tuned down a half step, I'll oh, forget that. So the whole, every string on the guitar tuned down a half step, so if you need those notes, check out the uh, description of the video, and um, those notes will be written out for you. So we have third fret on the A, second fret on the D, open G, third fret on the B string, then the open high E string. Now, as he's strumming this chord, he's going to lift off the first finger, strum the strings, and then hammer it back down to that second fret on the D string. All right, and now from there, we're going to add the, um, the, it's basically one of this chord transitions away from this chord. You're going to add the uh, third fret on the high E string with your little finger. And then you're going to leave the chord to the next chord, which is going to uh, keep these two fingers here, and then hold an E minor underneath it. He's obviously using a 12 string. Sounds really big and uh, kind of a ringy sound to it. Um, but that's an E minor 7 chord. Now from there, when he transitions away from this chord, you're going to go to a, just keep these two fingers here still and come play a G, then a D major chord, and then back to the, the C add 9. So we basically have... Now, obviously, the rhythm is is, is very strange here. You, it's really something that you'd want to get into your ear and um, be able to, if you can follow the vocals really well, it helps you find it. Uh, what's going on is a, is a few measures of four beats and then a measure of three beats, then another measure of four beats, and then a measure of five beats. Um, so instead of having you count that all out, it's really more important to get the sound of it in your ear and try to keep that natural momentum in your hand, the, the down up eighth note feel. So we have this. See, I'm not strumming the strings each time and making it really light, and it's, it's kind of random. It doesn't stay consistent. So on that, it's the only thing that... You add that note to transition down to the E minor 7. And then you just basically strum this for a couple of beats. Then you hit an accent on that chord. Accent on the G, just hit once. Accent on the D hit once, and that takes us back to this C add 9, which um, you continue just the same thing you did before with a couple hammer ons. Here we go. One, one, one. So you want to feel to where you can. There's those four distinct hits in the rhythm, and that's what you need to find. And you basically just go through all four chords, starting with that E minor 7, G, D, C add 9. So it's starting over. Here we go, just... So if you get used to that feel, and then you can start doing your own little thing with it, just kind of you know messing around with the the strumming pattern like he does throughout the the whole recording. So 
but it's a nice kind of subdued rhythm so you don't really need to be anything very dynamic in it. Now we have a couple of really nice guitar solos here. So I'm going to take a look at the first solo uh, right here. I'm going to play through it real quick. Um, in the next video we'll take a look at the second solo. So here's the first one. So let's take a look at there. We're going to be playing a bar with your little finger, or you can do your third finger across the 12th fret here, across the G, B, and the high E string. So pick from the high E string, let them all ring together across those three strings. Then you do a half step bend and release at the 11th fret on the G to 9, and then 9. 10 on the D. Then you have this little melody. That's 9, 10, 12 on the D, and then 9, 10, 9 on the G. All right, and now we have another little. Dis We're going to hold uh, the. Uh, the little finger across the 10th fret on the B and the high E, and then the 7th fret on the G this time. So you pick across those three notes, letting them ring as well, and then that's a bend and release. I, I'm bending downwards, it's usually easier to bend downwards with your uh, first finger. Uh, the 7th fret on the A string, I'm sorry, D string, it's an A note, and then 5 four on the same string. So, all right, now I'm gonna start back over. So that was the same thing we did earlier to start the solo, but now this part coming up is a little different. So that's nine, 10, 12 on the D again, to nine on the G. So hold that and then 11 and then you play 12, do a hammer 11 to 12, back to 11, to 9, and then play 11, 9. So. Slow one more time. And then the same ending. All right, so it's just that same way we ended the two figures before. So you want to really look at it as the same thing repeated twice. Is that we have one ending, or one little fill in the middle like this, and then the next time, and then everything else is the exact same. All right, so stay tuned uh, for the next lesson. I'm going to take a look at the outro solo, which is a little bit more extended. It's really cool, though. I'll see you then.